when you're a generation like ours, you don't talk a lot about things. I mean, look at the generations before us. You know, you got the silent generation, the greatest generation. They did not talk a lot about what happened in their lives, their childhood, when they grew up, when they got older. They shared some experiences as they got older. Yes, but not many of them. And we didn't either. But the successive generations below us, they share a lot. And sometimes they share too much. You got things like, I go say, the Gen Z, and we harp on the Gen Z, but they are our progeny. They're the product of us. And one of the problems we had is we turned around and we took them and we spent so much time doing what we had to do and growing up the way we had to grow up. When it come to certain things, he didn't want to perpetuate the cycle. So you cut it out and you change the way things are for a lot of people. Did we go too far? I mean, we complain they're too soft, but it, that's a product of what we did. And then we're trying to instill life lessons on them and they fight us tooth and nail and won't listen. And they become overprivileged, overprivileged babies that just can't seem to grasp the fact that adulthood is way different than childhood. So I got to ask, what do you do with it? Because that seems to be, it's just our chickens coming home to roost. We kind of created a problem by not wanting to create the same problems that we had as kids. We cr inadvertently created another problem as they got older. Something we did not expect because quite frankly, no other generations have been raised as coddled or as pampered as they were or have as many luxuries as they had or had it as easy as like they talk about having it so that they have it rough and there's no job. There are more job prospects now than ever. There are more opportunities than ever. If you don't have an opportunity and you don't have a prospect and you have absolutely nothing, it is because you are not trying. You are sitting at home doing nothing, waiting around for someone to do it for you. One of the things I was told is when you're sitting there and you started getting in there in the workforce and you want to look for a job, sitting around at home don't work. You had to go out and try. You had to talk to people. You had to meet people. Everybody wants to sit at home now. Everybody wants to sit around, sit in front of a camera like this and think, oh, I'm going to be YouTube famous. I'm going to be Instagram famous. I'm going to be TikTok famous and I am going to make a fortune. And guess what? For 99.9% .9 of people that do this, there is no money in this. There, There isn't. I mean, do you think I come on and do this for money? No. I mean, would it be nice if a person could turn around and are they listening to a living, the type of thing where I could do this from almost anywhere or travel and enjoy life? Hell yeah, I'll admit that, but I know that ain't going to happen. See, I have a realistic outlook. I do this because it's fun. I do this because I enjoy it. And I do this because on Saturday, when I go live, come and check it out, people. I enjoy the people that we have a conversation with and we have real conversations. We laugh. We we talk about good times, bad times, movies, music, anything and everything to do with our generation and our experiences. So come on by and check it out on Saturday nights. Now, when I get to it, and it's really, is this our chickens coming home to roost? Yes. And we fix this. Yes. But are they going to fight us? Yes. Why? Because we coddled them too much. We babied them too much. And we carved out such an easy path that they don't know what it's like to move through life with resistance, anything pushing back on them. They don't know what it's like to fall on your face and keep moving forward. They don't know what it's like to fail and have to get up and start over. There are a few that do grant you, yes, there's like that small percentage of them that will because, you know, they were just in that position where they were forced to live a certain way, grow up faster. I mean, nobody should be forced to grow up as a child. Kids should be allowed to be kids. That was one of the worst things about us when our generation, when us Xers were kids, is we were forced to grow up. We were forced to grow up way too fast. We weren't allowed to just be kids. Kids couldn't be kids when we were young. We tried. I mean, they had that motto, kids will be kids, boys will be boys. But what? We didn't have a choice. We didn't get to be kids. We didn't just get to be boys, be boys, girls, be girls, girls, be tomboys, whatever it was. We didn't get to do that. We lived the life we lived. We grew up and most of us went, you know what? We are going to stop this crap. We're going to break this cycle of ignoring children and using them as just an object that is an inconvenience at home that you feed, you clothe, and one day they move on, right? That what do you do it for? Just basically to perpetuate the race. That's what it felt like. That that's all we were. We were just our parents' ability to perpetuate the population and keep going. And to hell with them. We moved on. 
Some of us have good relationships with our parents. Some of us don't have relationships with our parents. Some of us have a good one with one, not with the other. There's all sorts of variations out there, but we moved on. We grew up. Yeah. Now we talk about it. Yes. Why? Because it's so far back. It's so far in the past that now you have to teach others so they don't make the same mistake. You see, what's going to happen is you got the, the Gen Z and the ones that are coming after and they've been so coddled and don't know how to be adults. They don't know how to raise kids. They're not going to raise kids. They're not going to be parents. They're going to be friends. They're going to be best friends with their kids instead of parents. And that is going to cause another issue with another generation. And they're going to wind up more like us. Because then the generation after them is going to be like, well, my kid was my friend, but I don't really like my kid. And they're too younger than me, so I can't be their friend. And I never learned how to be a parent. And you're going to have another generation of wild kids roaming around that get into trouble and nothing to do. And no, there ain't going to be no technological fix for all this crap. Everybody says every generation, the technology is bad, so it's going to be easier. And it's not always easier. You have to understand this. It's not always easier and it's not always going to be easier. And there's not a lot of damn things you can do about it. But we need now to step up. We're trying. I get on here. I talk about, yes, I come down hard on Gen Z. And sometimes I have sympathy and empathy for them. But you have to do it from all angles. You can't just sit there and say, well, there are kids and we coddled them. So now it's our fault. And we should just forget about it and leave it alone because we created it. No, you fix the mess you create. And that's part of when I talk about Gen Z and what they are, what they've done and how babyish they become and what it needs to correct them. What is this Xer standing up to fix a problem that we had a hand in? Because I don't see anybody else standing up and taking responsibility. You don't see boomers taking responsibility for millennials. You're not going to see millennials standing up and taking responsibility for the way Gen Alpha turns out, right? It's just not going to happen. You didn't see the silent generation standing up and taking responsibility for Gen X. Nobody takes responsibility for the further generation. They just get down on them and blame them and don't like them and call them lazy and say they're bums and they're no good and they have no future and oh man when I get older I'm not going to have a future because they're going to be running the country they're going to be ones looking after us and they're absolutely useless now well if you do that the entire time yeah they're not going to give a damn about you but if you stand up and you try and correct and you try and teach lessons and you try and show them that yeah there were mistakes made but this is how you can correct it now so you don't go along in the future and keep doing it and keep going that way. I mean, that's how you wind up with these generational cycles. The fact that people don't see it or don't want to admit it always amazes me. They'll talk about generational cycles when it comes to alcoholism and, and family abuse and, and all that stuff. But they don't talk about the full basic generational cycle. How about how come one entire generation is very rebellious and then another is completely coddled and another one is entirely submissive? They don't talk about that and they should anyway that's just another rant piece from old Drac here so everybody remember when you're out there to the best of your ability teach a lesson to the younger people and stay safe as safe as you can in today's world until next time peace <laughs>